Okay, hear me out. The number of wheels on your mode of transportation seems to bounce all over the place as we age. Most of us start out on three wheels, a tricycle. Then after a few scrapes, we move on to two wheels, a bicycle. Typically, as a late teen or adult, we up our ride game to the full four wheels of a car. But some of us who often like wearing leather stay in the two-wheeled mode of motorcycles. And some motorcycle designs we can credit to the service of the high-flying innovations of a man named Curtis. The Curtis I'm referring to was Glenn Curtis, a mechanical and electrical genius who rubbed shoulders with some of the greatest innovators of the 20th century. I met up with the Henry Ford's associate curator, Sage Yedley, to learn more about this gifted aviation entrepreneur. Glenn Curtis, that's a name that's come up at least a few times on this show when we talk about aviation. But I'm guessing he was known for more than aviation. That's right. Curtis was an aviation pioneer, but he got his start building motorcycle engines. And this is, first of all, terrific looking. And it also kind of looks modern because there are a lot of motorized bicycles these days, right? Is that what this is? A bit, it's sort of a descendant of those first motorized bicycles. So this is a circa 1910 Curtis motorcycle. By this point, he's still using a single cylinder engine, but he would quickly develop a two cylinder. Did he invent the motorcycle? He did not. There were other people experimenting with the technology around the same time. Curtis's product was a bit lighter weight than some of the big name brands of the time, and it was also a very fast product. How competitive was he when he was riding? Curtis was quite competitive. He craved speed. He pretty much refused to compete unless he thought there was a good chance he could win. In 1903, he set a world speed record at that time of about 64 miles an hour. Which is fast. It is, but the most notable record he set came out of experimenting with an aeronautical engine that was an eight-cylinder. He got the idea to build an eight-cylinder motorcycle, which in 1906 must have seemed absolutely crazy. In January 1907, he opened it up at Ormond Beach in Florida, and he set an unofficial land speed record of 136 miles an hour. On the sand? <laughs> On the sand. That's much faster than any vehicle or person had gone at that time. Why did he turn to aviation? So it was all about these engines, the same things that made Curtis engines ideal for motorcycles. Their lightweight and that high power output attracted airship builders and other aviation pioneers. Curtis happily sold them engines for their experiments. In the pantheon of aviation innovators, where does Curtis stand? So Curtis was a, an adept salesman. He knew that to sell planes, it had to be practical for people to own them. So he staged competitions, he assembled exhibition teams, he built and promoted things like airfields, flying schools, flying services these real core pieces of our modern aviation infrastructure. Even though we recognize the Wright brothers more than Glenn Curtis for aviation innovation, we owe him a great deal of thanks for opening up the skies for all of us to soar.